Are you ready for LFA? <laughs> What's up, brothers? Hope everyone's doing well out there. So the sun just dropped below the horizon about 10 minutes ago. I figured, you know what? Let's turn the camera on and let's shoot the shit with the people on the LFA After Dark channel. And what I want to talk about in tonight's video is a subject that a lot of people request that I'll talk about, but it's just not something I really care about. To be honest with you, it's not a subject that I really concern myself with, and that is dealing with narcissists. I know a lot of people out there suffer from encounters that they've had with narcissists, and I typically steer away from it, and there's a reason for that, and that's because if you have game, you don't deal with narcissists. A lot of people think game is a skill or like pickup. They think it's getting laid and an ability to talk to women. No, having game simply means making smart decisions and doing what's best for yourself. That's it. And de dealing with a narcissist is not a smart decision and that's not what's best for you. So I don't typically do it, but I do have some experience dating a narcissist and you know, I don't typically talk about my relationships, but I'll go in depth about this. I do have a, a, a pretty rough experience with a narcissist. Now, when I met this gal, I had no idea that people could be this twisted. I had no idea that there were people out there that didn't genuinely want what was best for the people around them. I thought everyone just was like me, you know? We look after each other, we help each other out, we uplift each other, iron sharpens iron type of deal. But some people out there aren't wired that way. They're wired backwards. There's something off about them. And there's one thing that every narcissist has in common. They have this unique ability to rewrite their personal history and rewrite the history of the shared experiences that you have with them. So when I met this girl, when we first started dating, she was cool, you know, she was hot, she was fun, but she seemed very innocent, more innocent than the average girl did, I'll say that. There was something very, uh, there was like a twinkle in her eye very innocent, just happy-go-lucky, seemed like a naive girl. But she would do things, as I said, she would rewrite history. You know, something would happen, we'd have like a little disagreement, and then afterwards, she would rewrite history. The way she would interpret what happened was different than what I interpreted you know and it seemed a little confusing to me but I tried to be understanding so it was just small things right like um, maybe I would say like uh, where like let's go to eat at uh wherever let's go get some Italian food and then she'd be like I don't want Italian food I'd be like okay and then we would go somewhere else, right? And then the next day she would say something like, I was the one that didn't want Italian food and she wanted Italian food. You know what I'm saying? It was just like little things like that. And I'm like, this is, this is kind of confusing, you know? It's kind of, it's kind of off-putting. I don't really quite understand it. But then slowly but surely things would get a little bit worse. You know, her behaviors were always unpredictable and they were always very strange and, and just didn't make sense to me. But we would get in arguments and she would disappear for a day or two and she would block me on everything. 
And, you know, me being myself, I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't, I don't fucking care, whatever. If you want to stop talking, we can stop talking. I'm not going to chase you. You can just go do your own thing. And then after she was done pouting, she would come back. And she would apologize. And then she would say things like, I tried to add you back on everything, but you blocked me. And I would say, hold on. I didn't block you. You blocked me on everything. And then you came back. And then... <clears throat> Her version of the story would literally be, no, no, I deleted you, and then you blocked me. So she would say that I blocked her, and, and she deleted me. And she had tried to add me back many times, but she couldn't do it because I was gone. I was, I'd blocked her. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not dumb, but this is kind of interesting nonetheless. So, you know, she would rewrite history in these ways. And, and just, to me, it made no sense that somebody's brain could operate like this. But she truly believed it. She truly believed that her version of the story was the truth. Like, she would convince herself that this was true. And again, at this point, I, I could no longer take her serious. I was just like okay, what the fuck is wrong with this girl? I'm going to see other people. But nonetheless, I'm not, you know, a total asshole. I mean, I have, I have a heart. I care about people. So I can still be there and I can still talk to her if she needs somebody to talk to, right? I don't care. Call me blue-pilled or whatever. Call me soft. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I do what I want to do, and I don't give a shit what anyone has to say about it. So, anyways, and I can understand other people out there, if, if you're madly in love in this situation, if you're, like, really deep in a situation like this, this type of shit would mess with your head, and it would really have you in a dark place. But, nonetheless, again, it would evolve. To continue the story, it would evolve and get worse. I mean, it was the same type of behavior. It would just gradually get worse. So again, as we had broken up and I was seeing other people, but I would still talk to her, she started doing things like she would ask me if she could borrow money. You know, she would say, I get paid on Friday. Can you, can I borrow 30 bucks? And it would be like Wednesday, right? I'd be like, yeah, whatever, pay me back on Wednesday. Cash app her 30 bucks. Or pay me back on Friday. And I'd cash app her 30 bucks. And then she would send me the money Friday morning. And then the following week, she would ask for money again. Right? And it was just strange. And I didn't know anything about narcissistic personality disorder or how screwed up some of these people really are. In my head, I was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe she's just doing this because she needs some sort of like a connection to another human being, you know, so she wants to like borrow money and pay it back. It kind of like keeps us tied together. Maybe that's what she's trying to do. I'm like, I don't want this girl, like she's clearly a little bit strange. I don't want her to like harm herself or something. So, you know, I just kind of continued doing this. And she would do strange things like she would cash at me $20 and ask me if I would order her Uber Eats. And the Uber Eats would be like 19 bucks or something, right? So she would send me money and ask me to order Uber Eats, which was very strange. And again, I'm just thinking, I think this girl is, is off her rocker. Like there's something wrong with this girl, right? But... None of it made sense because she always paid me back within a day or two. And she would send me money and ask me to order something that she could order herself. I'm like, okay, this girl's twisted, right? Like some, she's got something psychologically wrong with her because normal people don't operate like this. And then <clears throat> come to find out. And this is the part where it's like, 
I, I just can't believe people can be this fucked up. Right? I can't believe somebody would be this fucked up in their head. She would collect the screenshots of every time that I would send her something on Cash App. And she would not keep all of the, the receipts where she would pay me back. So it made it look like I was sending her money all the time and I was ordering her Uber Eats all the time. When in reality, I wasn't like, she was paying me back for everything, right? So I was doing it because I'm like, well, I don't want this girl to like, harm herself. So in the time being, I'll deal with this shit. But she was using that as a way for her to look good in front of her friends right like so she would go back to her friends and be like look he's just sending me money and ordering me shit all the time like i'm some sort of like trick or simp or something right and somebody had told me about this and i'm just like what in the fuck so i called her and i called her out and i said i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bother with you at all anymore you know, I thought maybe you had some problems and I kind of wanted to be a friend for you. And I, I, at this point, viewed myself as like a father figure, like an uncle to her. I didn't even feel like a boyfriend to her anymore because if you've ever dealt with somebody with NPD, you'll understand that they are like little kids. Like they're like these weird, like, they're like these innocent, damaged little kids that you want to help, but... They're also very fucked up and they'll really screw you up if you don't, uh, <laughs> you don't watch out. So anyways, <clears throat> I called her out on her shit and she started crying and, and going crazy. And then she went to a family get together and she went there with some other guy. And I guess she got really drunk and tried to burn her family's house down which was crazy, right? Like she had flipped out so hard. When, when a narcissist is mortified, which when her friends told me what she was doing and I called her out on the shit, she was so mortified by it. Like her life was so, like she, she couldn't handle being told off and being shown how fucked up she was that she went out and did crazy shit. Like she was literally willing to like really harm people and stuff, you know? And uh, fortunately, after that, I had, uh, I had moved and hadn't really, I only moved like 30 minutes away from there, but she no longer had access to me. Like she couldn't, she didn't know exactly where my address was and you know on social media I had her blocked for a while and we just kind of we quit talking I think she probably moved on to somebody else but I can only imagine what it would be like for a guy who's in his feelings or a woman that's dating a man like that and they're, they're really in their feelings and really attached to that person you know and that person is doing all these crazy things making all these crazy decisions constantly rewriting history between the two of them you know every day whatever happened yesterday the argument that happened yesterday or the whatever conflict you had yesterday the way you remember it is the opposite of the way they remember it and the strange thing is, they actually think they're right. Like you can look them in the eyes and they believe that you're the one that's crazy. And it's so, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a mind fuck. It's like a Twilight Zone type thing. Because it has you questioning, are you the narcissist? Are you the one that is actually rewriting the history of the situation. It's not them, it's you. And 
if you're somebody that is bit by the love bug and you're you're going through a love sickness with this person because it's constantly up and down and you're always depressed this could be a uh, very tricky and difficult situation because the way you see things will be quite blurry but as I stated in the beginning of this video, the reason why I don't deal with narcissists is because I do have game and I don't put myself in those type of situations. And uh, I recommend that you don't either. The second you start to recognize this pattern of them constantly changing what happened, their version of the history between the two of you is different than your version. And you know you're not crazy. You know they're off. You know you know what they're saying is wrong. You have to identify that immediately and say, you know what, we're not going through this shit. We're not dealing with this shit. We gotta be smarter than that. And I know a lot of people out there, for whatever reason, they get hooked on that shit. They date multiple narcissists. They'll, they'll date one narcissist for five years and then go through a bad breakup and they'll meet another one. You know, you got to get some game. You got to immediately. The first time you catch them being a little bit off, a little bit dishonest, you got to immediately pull yourself out of there. When they ask why, don't come up with some random shit in your head like, they're asking why because they really miss me. No, fuck that. Don't worry about why they're reaching out. Just get rid of them. Drop them immediately. Because they'll do that. They'll, they'll find ways to, when you try to walk away, they'll try to get you back. Try to keep you reeled in. Can't be that easy. Now, if you're easy, you'll get taken advantage of. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and leave that one right there. But I hope this video was somewhat informative. And that's about it for tonight, guys. Until next time, see ya.